What's up guys, it's Oblivious Gamer here, and today I wanted to talk about Star Ocean The Divine Force, which its demo just came out. I managed to put some hours into the game, and well, personally, I was excited for this game, and a part of me still is, but playing the demo, I do have some concerns, complaints, and also some problems like frame drops here and there. It is still fun, but there are some technical problems that hopefully will get fixed by the release. Now before I continue, if you like the content, don't forget to subscribe. Star Ocean The Divine Force is the 6th major installment in the Star Ocean series, with the first game coming out in 1996 and its last game came out in 2016, which wasn't that well received, so it's been 6 years since the last Star Ocean game, so I was excited when the Divine Force was announced. The summary of the plot is, on a routine transport mission, Raymond Lawrence's spaceship is attacked by the Pangalactic Federation and he crash lands on a underdeveloped planet. He meets Princess Laetitia, who is fighting to protect her homeland from the invading empire. Together they set off on an adventure that will shake the foundations of the entire universe. Now, when the game comes out, you will be able to choose if you want to do your first playthrough as Raymond or as Laetitia. However, in the demo, you can only pick Raymond. Now, looking at the graphics, I have to say, in some areas, it does look a bit rough. Now, Star Ocean has a specific art style, character model, design, you know, you can tell when it's a Star Ocean game. Which is why, you know, characters look a certain way. Personally, I'm fine with the art direction, but I do understand it can put some people off just because of how it looks. Another thing to note is there's a lot of pop-off in the environment sometimes, like you load in first and then like some parts start loading it of the environment and it's just a bit jarring. There's also a lot of moments where frame rate drops. Despite choosing the frame rate priorization mode, I noticed it happened when there are a lot of particle effects, when I was like flying, or when I was like running too quickly. I want to point out that the story so far feels a bit weird like there are many cuts that make a lot of it not feel cohesive you got a loose end to tie up don't worry i'll be right behind you i'll be fine And you stupid power has been cut from this section of the ship no matter how hard you try you won't be able to open that door elena the historia has fired on us i'm sorry but there's not enough time to save the cargo before impact you have one minute that's more than enough time now help yes we give you the space you ask in good faith in exchange you will tell us who you are and the nature of your talking airship. Awesome. Okay. Sounds like we got a deal. What the feds don't know can't hurt them. Antonio? It's me, Raymond. Oh, Ray! Are you okay? Yeah, define okay had a run-in with the Federation and... I play Star Ocean Integrity and Faithlessness, which is the last one, but I'm having trouble remembering if this was a thing too in that game, so if this is a thing with the series. The way transitions and cuts occur feels very jarring, and it cuts a lot of the moment, and like I said, you're looking at cutscene and it doesn't feel as cohesive, like it looks like, oh, we're in one place and then boom, we're in another thing. I am hoping this is just because of the demo and not something that we will see in the final game, maybe? Another thing I want to point out is that for me, at least the English voice acting feels very hit or miss. Like at times I am, oh this is okay, it's not bad, and then there are times where a lot of the dialogue feels stiff or emotionless. You gotta be kidding me! What is it? A 
Elena. Why? Ray. Why'd I have to play the hero? Why couldn't I just get in the damn escape pod? <laughs> Some captain I am. Uh, Ray! Duma production model 004213 activating. Confirmed. Life forms in need of protection. Whoa, hey, what the heck's this supposed to be? Warning. Warning. Hostile entities identify. Why, it is just marvelous. Tell me, is this some new form of semiomancy? There's that word again. What, is it like your version of symbology or something? Symbology. Uh, never mind. Uh, anyway, thanks you two. I really appreciate it. Oh, and while I'm at it, here. And what will you do once we part? Well, try and figure out where my friends are, for one. Uh, these lands are vast. What will you do for lodging, for food, for survival? What if your companions are across the sea? Would you swim? Like, I get Albert and Leticia are from a kingdom, and they're trying to emulate like an old, refined style of English speaking. But many times, it just comes off like weird and emotionless. Like, at least for me, it doesn't listen that good. I might switch up to the Japanese stuff depending on how I feel as I continue the story. Maybe this is something that gets better or may change it up once you progress a bit more. I don't know. The exploration is okay, like it's not something too crazy, but I feel having Duma with you and being able to fly definitely adds to the experience. The areas in the demo are big enough, you can go around, fight different monsters, like find chests, find you know, loot around, and even meet very strong enemies if you're not careful. So there's also a bit of challenge if you want to explore and find stronger enemies. The combat in the game, at least for me, this is where it shines and it's the most fun. I'm enjoying it a lot. Once you start getting into the rhythm and understanding about, you know, the AP usage, how to use your chain order, switching on the fly between characters, it's fun. It's a great experience as you're comboing and nailing certain attacks. It looks flashy also and it looks great. In the game, you will have like an AP bar and your attacks will use the AP bar. Now, you will see you can start out with the AP bar like small, but as you're fighting and you're performing certain moves and timings, your AP bar can increase, which of course means you can do a lot more moves. In the menu, you can select and create a chain order of moves to one button. So you can select like up to three moves in one button. So you can mix and match, see what moves will work better with each other. So you can do that. Of course, you can also free flow stuff. Personally, I find it fun to like set up specific chains and see like how they work in the fight. Trying out different chain orders and setting them up is again another part of the experience of the game. Switching on the fly from character to character and continuing your combo is also very rewarding when you nail it. And once you unlock Duma and you're able to fly and use it in combat, it's very satisfactory when you're just flying and you're just hitting the enemies or you're blindsiding them or you're stunning them when you're just like flying around. It adds a lot to movement and use in specific situations. Like through and through, at least for me, the combat is fun and I think this is where the game shines a lot. Then there's also stop motion. So despite this being like a action-y RPG, when you use stop motion, everything freezes. So it gives you time to breathe, think of a strategy, maybe like set your characters to different settings, you can heal or you can just, you know, 
relax and see okay what do i do now so i like also that a lot and you can use stop motion at least as far as i have tested in any situation like it's not like there's a limit to it then like if you go to like character leveling up you can look at the character skill tree which are quite big so there are a lot of moves you'll be able to unlock you'll be able to level up your characters and further customize your combos you can also level up duma that of course you know will have like strength and weaknesses and like move sets that you can add and also you can level up specific moves from your characters so a lot here to do like i was like damn there's gonna be a lot and there's gonna be a lot of decisions which for some it might be a bit overwhelming for others it might be like oh wow this is amazing so uh, through and through i feel with the combat is fun and with the way like we have the skill trees, the chain orders, I feel it's going to be very customizable to what the player wants. So in the end, I'm still looking forward to Star Ocean The Divine Force. I feel this can be a fun game, especially because I like the combat. Though the game does have flaws, some technical, which I am hoping those get fixed by the time the game comes out. Other flaws are, like I said, the voice acting, the way that scenes are cut and doesn't feel cohesive. I don't know if that's something that can be fixed or will it be fixed, but that's definitely a thing to consider if you're interested in the game. I do think you should try the demo out. Now, unlike a lot of the demos from Square Enix, you are not able to pass your safe data to the final game. So don't bother on collecting items or like trying to like min and max your characters. Just play it and see if you're gonna like it. In the end, it's just my opinions. What are your thoughts, guys? Feel free to leave them down below. This has been Oblivious Gamer, and I hope you'll have a wonderful day or night, wherever you are.